During the Tudor period, the Tower of London became a site of execution, in which queens of England lost their heads. For someone to be executed inside of the tower, they needed to either be royalty or of significantly high birth, as an execution within the tower was considered reserved for the most important people. This was as it was hoped that the eyes of the everyday public would not be on the executed individual. Anne Boleyn and Catherine Howard, two of Henry VIII's wives, along with Jane Boleyn, Margaret Pole and Lady Jane Grey, all lost their heads inside of the tower, as did Robert Devereux, a favourite of Elizabeth I. But many of those who were condemned and were also executed on Tower Hill were imprisoned at the tower and were accused of treason. One of the most serious crimes. But there was one aspect of the tower which became known for its association with traitors and those who were executed close by. Today this part of the tower can be viewed from the other side of the River Thames, and it has imposing writing warning people of its former use. But what is the story of Traitor's Gate? Initially, Traitor's Gate did not have any association with executions or with brutality. The Tower of London was the same as it was a royal fortress, and was a place where kings and queens during the medieval times would await their coronations before being taken to Westminster Abbey. But it was created by a medieval architect named Master James of St George, and a new water gate was commissioned by King Edward I between 1275 and 1279. Edward I wanted a new private entrance to the Tower of London's complex, and in particular to the medieval fortress which flanks the River Thames and forms part of St Thomas's Tower. He wanted a greater degree of privacy when travelling into the tower, and in a sense it was safer for the king to travel by river than it was in the streets. London throughout the centuries had a number of bouts of plague, and if Edward I could avoid crowds and travel by river, then he could, in theory, avoid deadly illnesses. Now the Tower of London was a place where the king's court would also be based, and they would live in luxury there. However, as time went on, the Tower of London's use became more of a royal prison than a palace. It was where many people would be tortured on devices such as the rack, and where many royal prisoners were housed in cold prison cells and various different towers and rooms. It was around the Tudor times that the Watergate became known as Traitor's Gate, due to the amount of prisoners who were brought to the tower and were accused of treason. Many were brought to the tower through this specific entrance, and the prisoners who were brought by barge along the Thames would also pass under London Bridge, where the heads of recently executed prisoners were placed on pikes high in the air. During the reign of Tudor monarchs such as Henry VIII and Elizabeth I, a huge number of political prisoners were taken to the Tower. These included Edward, the Duke of Buckingham, Sir Thomas More, Queen Catherine Howard, Edward Seymour, the Duke of Somerset, and even Princess Elizabeth, the future Elizabeth I, were taken to the Tower, entering through Traitor's Gate. It's long been thought that Anne Boleyn, the infamous second wife of Henry VIII, came into the tower this way, but this was not the case, and she instead disembarked her barge, climbing up the Queen's steps and walking onto Tower Wharf, before entering through the Byward Tower. She asked William Kingston, the constable of the tower, when she got into the tower, whether she would be imprisoned inside of a dungeon, but Kingston replied with, No, madam, you shall go to your chambers, whereat your grace lay before your coronation. Anne was imprisoned in the Queen's lodgings, and was treated well, but the propaganda value of having her taken through Traitor's Gate never actually happened. She was affected by her imprisonment and impending execution, as she did have bouts of hysteria and depression, but further people were taken into the tower via the gate. They would signal to guards that the gates needed opening before the barge would pass into the tower, and then the prisoner would disembark and would be led up the stairs. The future Queen Elizabeth I was even taken into Traitor's Gate, and she was taken into the tower where her mother Anne Boleyn was executed. Traitor's Gate was used to intimidate Elizabeth, as her half-sister, Queen Mary I, imprisoned her, believing that she was involved in the rebellions against her. Elizabeth was then taken on Palm Sunday, 1554, through Traitor's Gate, 
and she was incredibly panicked and upset by this. She believed she would never leave the tower once she went through Traitor's Gate, and probably believed that she would be buried close to her mother, having been executed. Elizabeth refused at first to land at the gate, saying she was no traitor. But there was a heavy downpour of rain, and she had no choice but to land there. She went through the bloody tower's archway after landing, and initially protested about being a prisoner, before she saw the scaffold which had been left following the execution of her cousin Lady Jane Grey. Elizabeth was then imprisoned in the bell tower, and despite numerous interrogations, she played her interrogators, knowing that she could not be executed, as nothing could be proven against her. Mary I was then eventually forced to release her. But Traitor's Gate would be the first step in the downfall and executions of the prisoners of the Tower of London. Prisoners were taken through there, but they were allocated a prison cell inside of the various stone towers. They could experience torture, but if they were condemned for the serious crime of treason, then chances are that they would be executed upon Tower Hill by axe or they were taken to Tyburn, across London, to be hanged, drawn and quartered. Those executed on Tower Hill were taken from the tower on the short walk north to Tower Hill, flanked by guards, before they were then taken onto the scaffold to meet the axe and the block. But Traitor's Gate was the first step in this bloody process, and there were many cases where executed Tudor figures were taken back inside of the Tower of London and their remains were then buried inside of the Tower's Chapel. In the vaults of this small church, the remains of Thomas Cromwell, Bishop John Fisher, Sir Thomas More and many more important Tudor people are interred. But to begin with, Traitor's Gate was never intended to be a place associated with fear and intimidation. However, as time went on, the relationship of the fortress echoed the water gate, which initially was supposed to be just an entrance and a gateway to a royal palace. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.